Hi, my name is Mr. Derber. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm now in my third year teaching here at Seneca High School. This is my eighth year overall. I was previously at LaSalle Peru High School for five years. I do teach, a, I do wear a couple of hats here at the high school. I am a special ed teacher slash case manager. So I may have your son or daughter on my caseload, even though I may not have them in one of my classes. I also teach a regular ed U.S. history class, and I'm also a coach. I coach football and track. So I may have your son or daughter uh, for any of those capacities. What you have listed there is my contact information, um, my email, my direct phone line, um, and I also have my hours there where I'm most available. Feel free to email me at any hour of the day or night. That doesn't matter. I'll get it. Uh, I do ask 24 hours for a response. Sometimes I'm able to respond to an email instantaneously. Uh, sometimes it does take that full 24 hours, depending on, on uh, how busy I happen to be. Uh, if you want a, a phone call conversation, that is my direct line. That goes directly to my phone in my class. Um, if I do not answer, which I probably won't because I'm either teaching or out of the room or, or whatever, uh, feel free to leave a voicemail. I will get those voicemails and I will return that call um, as soon as I can within that 24 hours. Uh, my prep periods are first hour, both A and B day, and that's 7.55 to 9.10 on both days. That's gonna be the best time if you wanna reach me and try to have a conversation. Uh, that's also the time that I tend to make my phone calls in the morning as well, so you might expect one of those. And while I'm on the subject of contact information, I just wanna stress that uh, teachers, parents, students, um, we all have to communicate just excellently uh, this year, uh, more than any other year. It, it's weird times and everybody is experiencing um, maybe different levels of chaos or different unique situations and trying to juggle everything can be a challenge. If there's anything that you think I need to know about your son or daughter, feel free to reach out to me. Um, when it's warranted, I feel uh, I, I'm able to extend some grace or maybe just a little bit more understanding of where that student may be coming from or anything else that you think is important, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'll go over my classes here that I have. The first class there is resource. Resource is a special ed class for students with IEPs. Uh, and this is primarily for students who uh, need help with organization, uh, keeping their assi assignments uh, straight or maybe their materials straight. Uh, and also for students who just need some extra help on independent work or homework or, or things like that. So that's a special ed class um, with myself and a couple of paraprofessionals as well. The next class is my U.S. history. Uh, this is my eighth year teaching U.S. history. Uh, that's where my background is. Um, I really enjoy it. Uh, and this is a regular ed U.S. history class. Uh, and it is a graduation requirement. Everybody has to pass U.S. history, first semester and second semester. So uh, the course content there goes from basically Christopher Columbus up to modern day. Um, and frankly, we're getting we're getting new history all the time. So I always have new material for that. Um, so that is my my U.S. history class. These next three classes here all have the CT in front of them. That's because these are what's called COTA classes. Um, COTA classes are basically regular classes with a regular teacher and regular ed students with it in that class, in addition to a special ed teacher and a certain percentage of students with IEPs in that class. So you have two teachers in that class. Um, the class is, same, is the same thing as a non-COTA class in the sense that the curriculum is the same, the rigor is the same, the expectations are the same. The only real difference um, is that you have two teachers in there, so two sets of eyes, um, two people to bounce ideas off of, um, and just provide that extra accountability. Now, I do want to stress that whether or not, if your son or daughter has me for a co-talk class, regardless of if they have an IEP or not, I'm their teacher. So any of the students in that class can come to me about anything. Same thing uh, for the other teacher. Any of those kids in that class, IEP or not, can go to the other teacher for anything. Um, and I think that's one of the advantages, 
advantages of the COTOT sections. So uh, these are the COTOT classes I have. The first one is American government. Uh, that is a that is a graduation requirement, primarily for juniors and seniors. Uh, the next one is COTOT integrated physical science, uh, which is a freshman sophomore level uh, science class. <clears throat> and the last one is COTOT human geography, which is not strictly a graduation requirement, uh, but many students choose to take that class to fulfill their social studies component. Uh, I have three different co-teaching partners for those classes. They're, they have done just a fantastic job. They're outstanding teachers um, who uh, are doing a great job communicating with me. We have worked really well together, and I really feel like those COTOS sections uh, bring something extra to the table, not just for the students with IEPs, but also for the students without IEPs. I really feel like uh, those classes give, um, give a strong <coughs> instruction to those students. So those are the classes that I have. And again, I just want to emphasize, uh, communicate with me about anything. I'm a parent as well uh, of small children. I, I'm trying to balance um, different schedules, new rules, and I, I know that there's a lot of chaos there and I'm in that same boat. Uh, so I, I'm happy to help in any way that I can. Um, I can try to clarify anything that I need to for you or for your son or daughter, and I'm basically here to help. So feel free to reach out to me uh, about anything. Thank you.